This is episode 115 part 2. Chahao asked. Soon, only a few days now. Third grandfather replied. In reality, there was already news a year ago that this type of distinguished meeting was going to be conducted, but only now was it going to start, carrying out a great showdown between all geniuses. Little friend, will you participate? Third grandfather asked. I want to take a look at the aspects of society. Shahao replied. The million village was quiet. With that silver spider protecting this place, rarely did any vicious birds or ferocious beasts break in. As such, the villagers' lives were quite peaceful. The villagers' youth were free to cultivate. They were like little calves, all of them full of strength. Let's go. To the country town. We are going to participate in the great competition of warriors. Five days later, the great battle selection process finally started. The youth in the village were all excited. Will we be able to get a good position? Don't think about it too much. The main purpose this time is to let you all gain experience. Third grandfather said. Third grandfather, your words really hurt, you know. The youth looked quite unsatisfied, muttering softly, I don't believe such a thing. We have to win. Right, we have to make our vermilion villages name shake the world. We will definitely defeat our opponents. The groups of youth rolled up their sleeves, eager for battle. Their hearts were all stirred up. They all wanted to give it a try. A black-colored unicorn tiger appeared. It had a chilean body and a tiger head, making it look rather vicious and sinister. Its entire body was covered in black scales. It looked everyone in the eye, and then it left, deciding not to attack them. This wasn't the first time something like this happened. Along the way, they several powerful vicious beasts, but when they saw that this group wasn't good to provoke, they decided not to attack. Third grandfather, have you heard of the cloud race before? Shahao asked. He entered the higher realms through the cloud race's transport formation, so he felt that this clan should be too far away. Sounds a bit familiar. Third grandfather nodded, where are there? Are they far from this place? Shahao asked for guidance. When I was young, I had gone out to travel around. I heard from others before that they were extremely powerful and extremely far. They shouldn't belong to our lightning province, said third grandfather. Cloud race was an extremely ancient great sect. In the higher realms, they had an unordinary inheritance as well. The province they were located in was called Cloud Province. So extraordinary. Shahao was shocked. Then, he thought to himself, feeling that it was definitely because the passageway broke apart, causing him to deviate from his original destination and end up in the Lightning Province. Third Grandfather, your village is going to participate in the selection of warriors too, right? These youngsters aren't good enough. They aren't strong enough and will most likely be completely wiped out. There were several dozen people on the back of the vicious bird. It was clearly another village who was bringing their youth to participate. This individual started a benevolent jesting. When the time comes, we'll let you know how powerful we are. The youngsters from Vermilion Village were unwilling to accept this. The vicious bird headed into the village. They came from another village. Their strength was quite good. One could tell just from their mount. After traveling several hundred li, the terrain gradually became more open. There were less and less forests. A city was faintly discernible in the horizon. They were finally about to arrive. Scholar Tree City, this was a country town that could hold several tens of thousands of people. It couldn't be considered big, but it wasn't that small either. There was an ancient tree at the head of the city. The branches were upright and strong, and its leaves were verdant and lush. The entire tree was covered in snow-white flower petals. This was an ancient tree that was over a hundred jong tall. This city obtained its name from this tree. It was the scholar tree city's guardian spirit. If one looked past the city gate, they would see quite a few people. A few mounts were lining up to enter the city. Today, the city was bustling with activity. Many tribes' young experts came. Out of the way. All of you better be careful. Python villages people swaggered off, leaving behind these words. Third grandfather. The youngsters were angry. They all clenched their fists. Don't be rash. I heard that there are a few vicious people from Python Village that are moving quite close. We are outside, 
so it is better if we don't provoke other parties as much and temporarily endure it. Third grandfather consoled. Everyone entered the city. There were special lodging locations, and someone showed them the way. Suddenly, everyone was shocked. They heard a sound like thunder rumbling. The great earth was lightly trembling. The entire ancient city was no longer peaceful. Several dozen mounts appeared by the city gate. They were all unique beasts that were powerful and fierce. Their enormous hooves trampled on the ground, releasing heart-trembling muffled sounds, unicorn beast. It looks a bit like a chileen and even has a bit of its bloodline. It is an extremely powerful beast mount. They are people from the prefectural city. These several dozen mounts were covered in dark golden armor. Their bodies were flickering with brilliance and releasing a powerful pressure. They were all unordinary. A young lady sat on top of them that was wearing a silver gown. She was extremely beautiful. The prefectural city's people have come to look around. They are paying quite some attention to this time's competition. The people sighed in admiration. Hurry and move out of the way. Someone cried out. Everyone took shelter, not daring to stop these people. Everyone's expressions changed. This emissary from the prefectural city was so powerful. Just this cold snort alone forced someone back. She was definitely extremely strong. From the looks of it, her age shouldn't be that great either. This made many of the youngsters feel a sense of failure. The country town's old city master coughed and said, Everyone, do not speak too much. Has anyone seen this silver-haired woman? This matter is extremely important. Many people shook their heads, expressing that they did not. They had never met this silver-haired woman before. Her temperament looked outstanding. If they ever saw her before, they would definitely not forget, she fled into this area. If you all have information about her, hurry and report it. There will be a generous reward, said the silver-robed young lady. She swept her gaze over everyone. Everyone became shocked. They looked at the painting again. The silver-haired girl was definitely powerful, with a character that was much more outstanding than the female emissary in front of their eyes and more formidable. Who was it that injured her? To actually flee to this place? Suddenly, Chahao's eyes flashed. Just now, he seemed to have seen a strand of silvery light. It was extremely blurry, flashing not far away. It made his mind jump. Could it be that woman came and was going to take action here? If that was the case, that individual from Immortal Palace was most likely going to appear too, Shaha was shocked. This was the same as the direction where he saw that silver flash. In that case, did the bone bracelet the female emissary, who came from the prefectural city carry a formidable secret treasure that could sense the individual in the painting? He secretly brought out the dual pupil and looked around. He discovered that at the end of the horizon, there was a silver streak of divine light that disappeared with a flash. It then completely vanished. He sighed lightly. He had to cultivate his own Tao heavenly eye. He always used this dual pupil, making him quite dependent on it. He still needed his own heavenly eye. Only, any type of heavenly eye was extremely difficult to cultivate. Endless cultivators had risen up, but only a few successfully opened a heavenly eye. Wait here, no one is allowed to act recklessly. Wait for that great one to come. The silver-robed girl's tone was extremely strict. A few minutes later, thunderous sounds rang through the air. This world was trembling in response, shaking everyone until their blood was surging. A crack appeared in the void, arriving with extreme speed. It was just too terrifying. He was too fast, leaving all of the cultivators staring in disbelief. He arrived from the horizon in an instant. Then, the void blasted open. An indistinct figure appeared that was flowing with endless radiance. He towered in mid-air like a supreme heavenly deity. Everyone couldn't help but feel an urge to kneel down and kowtow. They couldn't see his true body. It was wrapped within resplendent symbols that were mysterious and powerful. However, they could sense that this was a young male. His aura was heaven overflowing. He was like a true dragon that had emerged in this world. Everyone felt as if their souls were trembling. The only thing they could see clearly was that pair of eyes. They were incomparably deep. The scene inside was extremely shocking. There were stars moving about one after another. Chaotic energy pervaded the air, 
as if the heavens was reopening. Void halberd. Shahal's mind jumped. This was a precious artifact that was extremely difficult to find, one that was formed from a void beast's primordial true bone. That was why he could directly arrive from the distance by piercing through the void. A precious artifact that was powerful to this degree was perhaps something only Immortal Palace's young Great One could possess. Its value was immeasurable, because it was just too hard to get. Where? His voice was calm. Everyone knew that this was definitely a cool-headed person full of confidence and power. Great One, she went in that direction. The silver-robed woman pointed in a direction outside the city. Only now did her expression slightly improve. You do not need to worry. The golden bone bracelet I gave you can completely protect you. Immortal Palace's young great one calmly said. I understand. The silver-robed woman nodded. In the sky, the young man that held the void halberd was like a divine king. Every inch of his flesh was surging with divine symbols. His long hair scattered about. He closed his eyes and silently sensed his surroundings. A wave of power that seemed to contain both secrecy and power swept through this place, making everyone's minds jump. Fortunately, he was just looking for that silver-haired woman and not dealing with the people here. Otherwise, the leaders of the tribes and their youth would have all fallen weak onto the ground. It should be one of her spiritual bodies that purposely led me here. A moment later, Immortal Palace's young Great One spoke. He was still calm and not flustered, I apologize, Great One. The silver-robed woman blamed herself and lowered her head in shame. Even though her status was unordinary, compared to this male in front of her, the difference was too great. Suddenly, he stopped again, not walking out. He said to himself, perhaps she is still trying to confuse me. It might not be a spiritual body. Her true body might be here too. His eyes swept over everyone again. Everyone's heart rates accelerated, feeling a tremendous pressure. Their souls were about to explode. What kind of power was this? Just his gaze alone was difficult to endure. All of you, continue your search. If there is anything, immediately report to me. Immortal Palace's young Great One held the void halberd, and with a peng, the void was pierced. A great roaring voice sounded. He pierced through the void and rushed outside the city. Shahal watched him leave. He was quite envious of the halberd. This was a priceless treasure. When could he obtain something like that too? When he was in the lower realm, he knew that Shiyi also had a similar precious artifact. Unfortunately, this type of thing could only be stumbled upon and not begged for. It was hard to find in the entire world. Only those with great luck could own them. At the same time, Shahal thought of that rumor. He learned from Immortal Mountain, when he was in the lower realm, that a dual pupil's expert appeared in the higher realms as well, his power shaking Heavenfall province. He was extremely outstanding, and later on, he joined Heavenfall Academy, is it him? Shahal didn't know. He couldn't even ascertain whether Shiyi was still alive. However, in that day alone, many changes happened to Scholar Tree City. There were quite a few mysterious figures that came to the city. They were all looking for something. These individuals possessed outstanding strength. Supreme experts. Shahal's mind jumped. He saw a few people who were all in the supreme expert realm. However, their identities were only events. They were only here to collect information. He became even more careful. The people that were coming were more and more formidable. They roamed about this place. It was clear that they came from different powers. They were all looking for the silver-haired girl. It was quite an irregular situation. What exactly did she do to make so many people hurry over? Shahal was confused. The next day, inside the arena. The youth from every tribe were present. The selection competition began. This was the stage where everyone had gathered at. It was extremely important. Our country town selection is simple. There is no need for life and death battles. The main thing is to test your potential. Watch me. Black Tiger tribe's youth walked out. His upper body was naked, revealing his bronze skin that was flickering with radiance. He released a loud shout, and with a honglong sound, he immediately raised a 9,000 Jin Great Cauldron. This was purely the power of his physical body. For normal village youth, it was extremely impressive. 
everyone began to cheer. When both his arms move, there is tens of thousands of jinn of strength. When he grows up, he will definitely become a powerful man. Shahal was also inside the arena. He casually raised a millstone before putting it down. He suddenly raised his head and looked into the distance, revealing a look of shock. A resplendent golden light illuminated an individual. It was as if a great flame was surging, lighting up half the sky. It was a young man that had a pair of golden wings. He arrived through the sky, his aura covering the world. That person is Jin Ji Yu. There were quite a few people who came, with no lack of supreme experts among them. When they saw this, they were all shaken. They couldn't help but cry out. Spirit race's exceptional talent, the young supreme being that held a condensed blood at birth. The heavens has bestowed the condensed blood onto him, turning into a spear. It was an innate power that was rumored to be able to pierce through everything. A few experts were shaken. They recognized his identity. Shaha was shocked. That same day, another exceptional talent came. This was definitely not normal. Did they all come for that silver-haired woman? His little brother is already extraordinary. As the older brother, he was born with the congealed spear. Afterwards, everyone cried out in alarm. They saw several figures cover the sky. They stopped above Scholar Tree City and released brilliant light. Then, they disappeared in the distance. Those are exceptional talents. Several of them appeared one after another. It seems like that legend is real. Everyone discussed in a low voice. Those old servants that came from various great powers all got up, returning to make a report. Shahal was shocked. This was such a small city, but several exceptional talents appeared one after another. The situation really was strange, which... Shahal's mind jumped. He hurriedly retracted his aura, not willing to be recognized now or make any contact with her. He never expected her to come as well. Then, Scholar Tree City's people were shocked again. They saw that young Great One from Immortal Palace again. By his side was a woman in white clothes that had an unmatched style and beauty. Shahal's mind shook. That woman was Yu Chan, without a doubt her main body. These two moved together, their bodies shining as they did so. They were searching for something. After not meeting for more than a year, Fairy Yu Chan's main body became even more beautiful. It was no longer tainted by the world of mortals. She had beautiful eyes and teeth, and as her white clothes fluttered behind her, she was like a fairy that walked out from a painting. Unknowingly, a pressure was exuded from her body. The power of her soul was astonishing, making even the people like Scholar Tree City's city master feel great fear. Shahal narrowed his eyes. He didn't look in that direction, but he couldn't calm down. This Yu Chan main body was more powerful than before. She was gorgeous, and an immortal aura was being released by her body. He knew a long time ago that Fairy Yu Chan wasn't a simple person. There were shocking irregular phenomenons as soon as she was born, which had triggered quite the sensation in the higher realms. Then, she was sealed. Back then, he and the witch discovered some clues when they dealt with Yu Chan's second body. In the depths of her consciousness, there was a charming and exceptional female sleeping. There was an undying life force exuding from her. Does this mean that she had started to unseal the restrictions and release the soul force? Her origins are too astonishing. Shahal sighed inwardly. The young great one from Immortal Palace was still as mysterious as before. Symbols covered his entire body, making it hard for one to see his true appearance, but his presence still made everyone incomparably respectful, not daring to look at him face to face. The two streaked across the air, as if they were a pair of jade. That's Heaven Mending Sect's fairy. As expected, she is an unrivaled beauty, beautiful to the point of almost seeming unreal. Only that immortal palace young great one can have this kind of exceptional fairy accompany his side. They are a perfect pair, like Dayoist immortal companions. Watch me. The million villages youth walked up. After taking a deep breath, he released a grunt, and then with a rumbling sound, he picked up a great cauldron weighing 10,000 jinn. Wow! His peers nearby were all in admiration and shouted loudly. What is so special about that? On the side, someone carried a look of contempt. Python villages people walked over. A robust youth grabbed a large cauldron with one hand, and then with rumbling sounds, he raised it. 
What great power! Everyone cried out in astonishment, because they came from ordinary tribes. For a teenager to depend solely on his flesh without any symbols and raise a 10,000 jinn great cauldron was quite impressive. The people here speculated that if that python village genius used all of his strength and both arms, he shouldn't have any problems raising a large cauldron weighing 30,000 jinn. It was extremely shocking. Not bad. Scholar Tree City's city master nodded his head in praise and revealed a smile. Everyone in Scholar Tree City watched while trembling with fear. This individual was too formidable, not even treating supreme experts as anyone special. They were clearly at the same cultivation realm, but it was so easy for him to kill them. Worthy of being the child of lightning. Someone sighed and said. I want to know if the rumors are true. The child of lightning overlooked Scholar Tree City towards those great powers troops and asked. The ones that were there stared at him and all shivered inwardly. This child of lightning received the protection of the heavens. He suffered a thunderstrike as soon as he was born, but not only did he not die, a symbol condensed on his skull. He was one of the world's most powerful heavenly geniuses. An old supreme expert opened his mouth and said, the outside world were all saying that the silver-haired woman obtained some great natural opportunity, and that was why she ended up being pursued by Immortal Palace's young great one. Tell me the main points. The child of lightning said with a profound voice. The old supreme expert hurriedly added, someone said that she obtained a supreme treasure, a three-world copper coffin. Someone else said that she discovered the supreme hall. As for which one it really is, we do not know. The others hurriedly nodded, agreeing with what he said. Even though Scholar Tree City selection competition could still be considered lively, due to the sudden commotion and the arrival of many experts, this competition instead seemed rather dull. Meanwhile Scholar Tree City's city master's face became pale. As the master of this place, in front of these experts from great sects, he truly wasn't all that important. Even those old servants were supreme experts with enough power to sweep through this place. Children, we should leave. Third grandfather felt as if something wasn't right. As soon as the selection competition ended, they immediately prepared to leave. The Million Village's youth were extremely disappointed because they were completely defeated. The country town only selected the ten best individuals. There were quite a few youth from the nearby tribe, so not a single person from Vermilion Village approached the top ten. At this moment, he was fighting a great battle against a group of golden ants. Every ant was the size of a barbarian ox. They were all pure-blooded creatures and incomparably fierce. The group of golden ants had extremely powerful flesh. It was difficult for precious artifacts to injure them. If other people encountered a single one, it would already be hard for them to win, but Tingyu was actually fighting against a whole group, heavens a single person fighting a great battle against the golden ant race, terrifying as expected. Worthy of being fire gold races unmatched Tingyi. Someone was watching from the distance, gasping in surprise. The million villages people passed by. They were all shivering in fear. The great snail increased its speed and fled from this place. Shahal's eyes flickered with radiance. He longed to fight against these people, but right now, he couldn't expose himself. The natural laws were still being replenished, so he couldn't act recklessly. It is better if I sneakily seize natural opportunities, Shahal said to himself. He didn't tarry here and followed Vermilion Village's people back. They made it through this dangerous road. After returning, Shahal didn't do anything risky. He waited for his body to recover, until he could use precious techniques. Before that, he would do anything rash. Finally done. Five days later, Shahal's body surged with multicolored light. Sounds rang out. He didn't need to restrict himself anymore. His symbols were replenished, becoming fully complete. He could use precious techniques again. He felt an unprecedented amount of power. When he moved his arms or legs, it harmonized with the world, as if he could make stars fall. When he noticed Vermilion Village's predicament, Shahal moved and hunted back some prey, for example dragon-horned elephants, two-headed fiery rhinoceros, six-footed camels, and other creatures. They were all enormous beasts. Many thanks to little friend. Third grandfather expressed his thanks. If they didn't have this food, these following days would definitely have been rough. Beside him, Fairy Yu Chan's white clothes fluttered about. She stood together with him. 
The two were like a perfect pair, working together to face off against the other two individuals. At the other end of the mountains, the witch was smiling sweetly. Her large eyes were intelligent, and her black dress revealed her body's wonderful curves, forming a stark contrast with fairy Yu Chan's white clothes. No, this is her real body. Shahao was astonished. He discovered that this black-clad woman was a bit different from in the past. Her appearance possessed all of the strong points of the heavenly fox fairy and previous witch. This girl, Shahao finally understood that the witch he met before was only a spiritual body. Next to the witch's true body sat an individual that was wrapped within flames. The flames were made of symbols, mysterious and holy in appearance. This was a young man. He was somewhat indistinct as he sat within, but Shahao could feel how powerful this individual was. There was a divine lamp at his shoulder that swelled with a mysterious energy that filled the void. He could actually stand against Immortal Palace's young Great One, so it was quite clear just how terrifying he was. This video will end here. Thank you for watching.